The data that I'm going to give you is going to cause some of your brains to go on lockdown. <laughs> so I'm going to need to give you an opportunity to stretch and breathe. The first order of business today is to go over how to use a dictionary because most of us were not taught in school how to properly utilize a dictionary. Once you understand that we are speaking English, which is not our language, it never was, which is a spell and a curse, and I wrote a news article um, in the Al Moroccan Star. I understand that the sister is going to give those out as donations one day. I don't know if it's today or tomorrow. But, oh, the brothers say today. Those of you that are here today, they're going to give you a copy of an article that I wrote in the, the Al Moroccan Star newspaper to expose what English is and what it has done. But once you get done with the, today's lecture, you will have a lot of clarity on some of the problems with English. The first thing you need to know, however, when you're utilizing a dictionary is how to read the tool. Hopefully, you were told that the regular dictionary that you received or picked up for this class should have brackets in the dictionary definitions. They look like these open boxes. If your dictionary does not have brackets, you don't have anything that will do you any good today. So look and see if your dictionary has brackets. In some dictionaries, they're immediately behind the word. Let's say the word is bad. It'll have this, and then it'll, it'll start out with an open bracket. It'll have a few things inside, which our minds have gone on lockdown and tend to see and not see those. You overlook them. In other dictionaries, it's almost the very last thing after maybe the 20th definition down the page. Way at the bottom somewhere, you'll find the brackets. Is there anyone that does not see them yet and needs me to come and show you where they are? know what the signs inside of the bracket mean otherwise you're going to just be in brackets looking at brackets and have no clue what you're looking at anytime you see the letter E period G period that means for example anytime you see the lettering I period E period that means that means Whenever you see this, this equals, for example, okay. yes. I period, E period equals, that means. Or, by that we mean. Or, that is to say. Anytime you see C period, F period, that means compare to. I'm blocking the view over here. Okay. Anytime you see a little c in front of a number like 1170, that letter means it's somewhere around about 1170. So a little c means somewhere in the vicinity of. Like circa? Circa. It, well, it, it is, is circa, circa same thing. but it means somewhere around about. That's, okay. That's what yeah. Okay? So somebody says, well, you know, I think the movie came out in circa 1980. 
Somewhere around 1980. Could have been 79, could have been 81, could have been 82, somewhere in the 80. Okay? Not exactly, not specifically, but somewhere thereby. Can I erase these? Because I need to add some different things. I see people still. Let me just keep writing, because some people are still writing. Anytime you see O H G, that means Old High German. Anytime you see M F, that means Middle French. Anytime you see L, that means Latin. L L means Lowered Latin. V L means Vulgarized Latin. A plain G means German. And let me know if I'm going too fast. And don't, don't forget, this is being recorded. VL means vulgarized Latin. Lowered Latin is what LL means. MF is Middle French. OE is Old English. It's very important that you guys know what this stuff means because today I'm going to show you some stuff and this is how you are going to learn how to really look a word up. You don't know how to do this, you've never looked a word up. Is your hand up, sir? Okay, look like you went like this for a second. Yes. Yes, sir. The G means German. O means old. So OL would be old Latin. NL would mean new Latin. The oldest dictionary you could find that had brackets in it. Yeah. I didn't know about the brackets. And I, 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 I did give that information. I'm not sure what, you know, how you were giving it. And I when, put it on the flyer too. That it needed to have brackets in it? You put that? Yes, I did. Okay. Yes, sir. Excuse me. OHG means Old High German. One, even though a lot of people are talking, I have a very big mouth. I have a voice that carries it across the room, even without a mic. You should be able to hear me when I start talking. I can usually talk over everyone else. Did yes. you say uh, uh, Latin? VL means vulgarized. Vulgar. Oh, v okay. Vulgar. Vulgar. Vulgarized. Latin. Because Latin, even though it was not our original language, and when I say our, I mean melanated people, it originally was our language. Originally, it belonged to us. Europeans lowered it and vulgarized it. So don't let anybody tell you about Ebonics and how you're messing up the King's English. It came from you. You mess it up whenever you feel like it. You do what you want to do with the language, because you started all of it. Yes. LL means lowered Latin. I need to give you guys this one, too. GK means Greek. And I'm going to add one more. Now, at this point, you should kind of be able to start figuring some of these out on your own. But uh, squeeze it in here. S-A-N-S -S means Sanskrit. So what do you think J-A-P means? All right, so we all, we all on the same page. Yes, ma'am. Okay, what does am.e mean? Am.e. Did I write that? No, I was asking because I see something. It's capital A. It's probably American capital English. Yeah, well, that's yeah what it's it capital means. A, yeah. small m. Yeah. I was just trying to American English. Okay. Now that we're all on the same page, we're going to move on forward. Is it possible for me to erase this at this point? I'm sorry, what did you, what did you say? Yeah. Um, do we have a black dry erase marker, sweetie? I guess it'll make it a little easier for people to... What's um, S-A-N-S? S-A-N-S means Sanskrit. Sanskrit. Hindustani Sanskrit. Is there abbreviation for Arabic? Arabic is A-R. A-R. 
dictionaries usually list what their symbols are if you're really using your tools. Well, that's true, but how many people have used these tools? How many people even taught about the tools? Most of our people, when you went to school, if the teacher asked you to, okay, here's 20 spelling words, I want you to write sentences, we were so busy trying to hurry and finish, we just looked at the first definition, wrote a sentence, went to the next word, first definition, wrote a sentence. We never read it more, we never read it, listen to me, we never read more than we needed to read, thank you, sweetie, um, to just get, make sure we understood enough to write a sentence. And that's really all we were taught. But that's not how they teach their children. So their children were taught what we're learning today. And I'm in my 40s, and I think I was in my 40s when I learned it. Is it okay to erase this? Anyone have any objection? Oops. Okay, my pouch is bumping into this as well as my feet, so let me take my pouch off so I don't knock the old board over. English is that it is an equivocal language. I would like for you all to turn in your dictionaries to the word equivocal. E Q U I O, nope, 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 my bad. E Q U I V O C L. Equivocal. Hmm? You say C L. Did I say CLC? I need to do a treatment. Frequently, I'll think something, and what I'm thinking and what I'm saying are not always the same. I have to try to get my brain in sync with my mouth. E-Q-U-I-V-O-C-A-L, equivocal. It's very important that you look this up. See, this is what's taking a little bit of the time. Now, while you guys are turning there, I'm going to go and start reading because we got a late start. Is that okay? Or do you want me to try to wait until most of you are on the page? Go. Yeah, it is being recorded. Okay. Equivocal means lots of things, and some of your dictionaries will tell you exactly what it means, and some of them will not. The most important thing you should know about equivocal language, which is what English is, is this. And this is an old de uh, definition out of an old dictionary. Equivocal language is subject to two or more interpretations, and it is usually used to mislead. The dictionary specifically said that. It is used to mislead, to deceive, to confuse, and it is of uncertain nature or disposition toward a person or thing. It is of doubtful advantage of doubtful genuineness and of doubtful moral rectitude. That's what an equivocal language is. That's what English is. That's why when our ancestors used to say, the pale man speaks with forked tongue, that's what they were talking about. He says something and it's not usually what you think it means. Okay? All right. Now, um, I'm going to... I kind of want to share, turn to grammar. Because one of the things that you learn about English is, is what? Grammar. And you go to what? Grammar school to learn grammar. Grammar is spelled G-R-A-M-M-A-R. -M -M grammar. Now, what you need to understand about the word grammar is there anybody here that's ever seen this show that comes on weekly about the three sister witches called Charmed? Yeah. And they always talk about this book called The Grimoire or The Dark Book of Shadows. That's another definition of the word grammar. Turn in your dictionary to the word grammar, and if it doesn't say it in the definition, it should say it in the brackets, that the word grammar is the same word as the word glamour, G-L-A-M-O-U-R, they're exactly the same. The word grimoire, I'm going to e erase equivocal if that's all right. Because once you get this, don't, I, I don't have a lot of specifics and answers. 
That's what Omari is for. What I'm here for today is to get you clear. Once you have clarity in the concepts and you can see the big picture, then when people like Omari start shooting data at you, you're not sitting there with a, and being bombarded with data. Once you have clarity and you can see the big picture, then when somebody starts throwing data at you, you can see it because now the fog is removed. That's what I do. I, I help people get things a little more clear. So I don't have a lot of specifics, but I can get you clear. Okay? All right. There's another word called grimoire, G-R-I-M-O-I-R-E. These three words are identical. Grimaire is G-R-I-M-M-A-I-R-E. And grimoire, G-R-I-M-O-I-R-E. These words are identical words. And when you look all of these words up in the dictionary, if you get to the brackets, then when you start looking at the derivations of the word, you will see that they're one and the same. So when you send your children to, and you went yourself, to grammar school, you were really being placed in a situation where you were being cast the most vital spell on yourself that could ever be cast. Grammar school is glamour school, grimmer school, grammar school, and grimoire school, the evil book of shadows. You were put a spell on, and you've been all messed up ever since. And the vowels, A, E, I, O, U, are also a very key part of that. And you learn how not only to learn it and memorize it, but you probably have a song that you used to sing it and say it to memorize it. And you will see that when you get the article that they're going to hand out. I'm not even going to cover that. Just read the article. It's only one page. It took up the whole back page of the article, of the newspaper, when I wrote it. And what is it called? I think the article is called The Spell That Cursed My People. I wrote it. Okay. Now, who has looked this word up, because I'm going to tell you what it says here. This is what I got out of the dictionary on these words. The word grammar means evil book of shadows, smoke and mirrors, a mask, magic, enchantment, witchery, occult learning, a layer of dust or grime, fierce or cruel, and it also means epistle, E-P-I-S-T-L-E. <laughs> that is what the dictionary had to say about this word. When you look, when you look up grammar, if you get into the who, who has it on the page? When you look in the brackets, you will find one or more of the variations in the brackets. And then when you go look up the, the variation like this word, you'll see this one in the brackets. You look up this one, this should be in the brackets. You look up this one, this should be in the brackets. One or all of these should be in the brackets. As you go, you'll see they're all the same. And I don't have time to wait for you guys to all go through all the words. I'm just here to give you clarity of concept so you can figure this out. Yes, sir? What year dictionary are you getting those definitions from? I've gotten these from many, many dictionaries, but the dictionary that I like the most is the Random House College Dictionary. <laughs> Not Random House Webster's. They're not the same book. What year is that? Um, this one, I think, is probably a 78, 76, 73, 78, something like that. I think those pages may have fallen out of mine. <coughs> you see the front of that book? Huh? The front of your book? The front has nothing on it, but it's a Random House College. Usually, if you find it intact, it'll have a red uh, desk cover over it. But at a certain point, Webster's took over. And Webster's is the worst thing going. This one is in 1973. Huh? How does Funk and Wagner be great? I don't know. I don't know much about them. Is that what you have? It's better than none. No, no, I don't. I'm just asking. Yeah, I don't know. From what I remember, it's probably not that great. I'd say Oxford's, but they're very expensive. Usually if you get a good Oxford's dictionary, which most European households have, they come several volumes in the dictionary. There may be a whole book just for A, another one for B and C. So by the time you get 
an Oxford dictionary, you have what looks like an encyclopedia set. Yeah. And it costs store, a lot of money. Miles Bookstore has a 13 volume set sitting in its window right now for $650. Right. And, you know, if you have it, get it. If you, if you can afford it, get it. They're probably the best. But if you can't afford it, then find an old random house that's not Webster's. Webster's should be the last thing you get, and get that only if you can't find anything else. Huh? Webster's and Yeah. Actually, they're a lot of the problem. That's why they went, went about the affairs of buying out and taking over most dictionary companies. Yes. including Random House, Miriam, and a bunch of other people's. Webster just seized them all up and said, oh, no, we got this covered. All right. Now, there's something else that I wanted to go over. How many people in here have heard that you are black? <laughs> How many people here know for a fact that you are not? How many of you know why you're not? I'm interested in hearing why you're not. Why aren't you black? Why am I not black? Yeah. Black is a color. I'm not black. Mm -hmm. Okay, and why aren't you black? Uh, through uh, European uh, And I want to know if anybody here is going to no. tell me the reason, the true reason why you're not black. And no, you can't tell no, me because you know. Lady, look, it was lady, it was the dictionary definition of black makes you not want to be. You don't want to be associated with that word. You're almost there, but not quite accurate. Because, uh, number one, uh, black is a color, like you said. But if you get into the physics of color, then... The reflection of the color is what you see. And therefore, if you appear black, it means you're reflecting the light and actually you're white. Hmm. No. He's, got, he, he, he's on point, but he didn't say it in a way that most people can get it. So, turn to the dictionary definition of the, the word black. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you why you're not black and why the word cannot possibly apply to you based on their definition. Now, frequently when the word is used to describe so-called black people, you know who they're talking about. But by definition, it's not even remotely possible for you to be black because the word black means bleached up and pale. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> <coughs> it also means bleak. These words are one and the same word. Now get in the brackets of the word black, and I want you to see where it says Old English. It'll say, oh, there'll be a bunch of di different things. It'll be B-L-A-K, B-L-A-E-C, and so on. But B-L-A-E-C should say O-E in front of it, Old English. Now, if you get to the word bleak and bleach, and you get in the brackets, they will say O-E-B-L-A-E-C, which means to whiten up, brighten up, lighten up, to be bleached up and pale in color. Ooh-wee. Ooh-wee. Now, who sees it? I don't even see anybody turn. <laughs> I mean, who sees it? Who, who, who doesn't see it? Yes, ma'am. Right. Right. Is there anyone that doesn't see what I'm talking about yet? What is A.S.? Oh, uh, um, Anglo-Saxon. And that's C-O-T is Scottish. Pale. M-E is Middle English. Huh? Bleak, bleak means pale. You see that? Yeah. But do you see in the brackets where these words are, all, one or all of these combinations of these words are there? Because you have to look in the brackets. It's like white. Yeah, right. yes. The one, uh, the O-E of bleak. O-E, B-L-A-E-C, should be in the black brackets for all three of these words. 
three of them is in there. I just want to make sure you guys are rolling with me. Because, see, I can stand here all day and tell you you're not black. It's not possible for you to be black. By definition, you're not black. Sure. You have to see that. Yeah, that's for real. I know yeah. I know. Okay, so by definition, is it possible for you to be, most of you, to be black? By old English definition, where the word came from. It's a misnomer. What's the matter, brother? This thing says white, right, see bleach. <laughs> like I said, I can get you clear. So when people like Moors and whoever and the brother here on Mari start saying, our people are not black, no matter what they're saying, you have a good reason why you know now that you're not. Okay, and I can give you some reasons in the cover thing when we get into the law dictionary why. Are you with me, brother? Because you look, are, do you have a dictionary back there? You, sitting like this with your arms crossed. Yes. Did you look in the book? Did you see it? Is there anybody here that thinks they're black now? No way. Well, it's not that, it's okay that you're confused because you're under the grammar. You're under the glamour of grammar. English is not your language. You speak it, but you didn't know it. Now I'm giving you some ideas how you can start figuring it out without me, okay? Now, let's go to another word. Turn to the word nice, N-I-C-E. How many of you, when someone tells you, you know, it was really a pleasure meeting you, you're very nice, you think they've said something good to you? <laughs> now, you see why I said... You had to have the books because you were going to think I was coming from left field and making this stuff up unless you saw it with your own eyes. The word nice, when you get in the brackets, it means stupid, foolish, ignorant, and you do not know. Do you see it? I mean, a lot of these words that people call simple words, those are the reasons why our people are messed up. Prime example. Michael Jackson. He's black. <laughs> <laughs> he's black. That's not what I was That's not what I was black. But he is black now. No, but he's black. <laughs> That's not where I was going with it. Is there anybody that does not see that the word nice is is not a good word to apply to anyone that you really care something about. Yes, sir. Actually, so, actually, strange, than good. Actually, saying I got this person nice, but else is actually just what you said. I'm calling you the little. Yeah, but if you know that you're spelling, see, when you're melanated, this, Omari and I were talking about this the other day. Europeans do not have what you have. They do not have the semi, well, the superconductor called melanin, or they do not have enough of it. Because you're melanated, and the more melanated you are, the more better, you are what is called a walking superconductor. Melanin has the capacity to absorb all forms of energy and frequency, light, sound, tone, and color, transmute them, transmogrify them, and then re-emit them as another form of energy. And the more melanated someone is, the more appropriate they are at doing it. And appropriate means one's own. So, when you look out at the world and you see the condition that it is in, and right now it really is a big mess. It's in a very big mess because the most melanated people in the world are in a mess. Because melanated people, because they are superconductors, have the power to take energy and create or destroy something. So everything that's going on in the world today is going on because melanated people project it out. Europeans, they have the ability to trick and deceive and use what is called violence. The word violence means, if you look it up, it means dis distortion of fact. If you look it up in the dictionary, the word violence means distortion of facts. 
Don't just sit there, you guys. Turn these pages so you can see what I'm saying. <coughs> I don't want you to just take my word for it. Don't believe that I'm telling you the truth. Look and see, and then nobody can ever come and take that away from you because you saw it yourself, you know for yourself. What Europeans have is the capacity, as the Bible says, to use violence and force and shed blood to cause my people to err. And my people suffer for lack of knowledge. We perish for lack of knowledge because we're nice. Now, I'm not saying we're crazy. We're under the grammar or the glamour of grammar. But what they have the capacity to do is create an image that comes through the textbooks you look at in school, the magazines you read, the newspapers you read, the radios you listen to, or the television programs, and they call it what it is. It's a program. Your brain is a supercomputer. They program what goes in, and as a melanated individual, they lay out their plan. Okay, they, what is it they say if you want to have, they ask you, so where do you want to be in the next 10 years? If you've already written out a plan, well, in one year I want to be here, in five years I want to do this, and in 10 years I want to own my own home. In 10 years, if you own your own home, is that a prophecy? No. That's a specific goal. Europeans have written out specific goals and projections and their target dates for which they want things to occur by. But they do not have the, pro the power to manifest the things they want and make them real unless they shoot them through the semiconductor of melanin, which is you, by way of their medium, because television, radio, magazines, books are a medium. That means they're the middle passage of what they send a thing through to the superconductor that is you, and then you project back the image and it was programmed into your computer to make their reality come to be. So you create and destroy the reality that you live in every day. And you have the power to do that. And the darker you are, the more you have the power to do that. And I love this brother's color. God, I wish I looked like him. <laughs> but for years, they probably had this brother thinking that there was something wrong with him because he was dark. Yes, ma'am. Oh, you nigga, you black, you ugly. You know, a lot of people get in this whole craziness and thinking that lighter and brighter should be better. Oh, I like her. She's got light skin. She's got good hair. Whatever that means. The nappier your hair is, the better. Because again, them spirals, which is your nappy little kinky spirally hair, are superconductors. If you take an automobile that has a radio and it has a straight, pale colored silver antenna for the radio, which is like blonde, straight hair, and then you need a, uh, you have a cell phone that needs more power to get over all of that. Then you got to take a little black, nappy antenna and stick on the car in order to use your cell phone because you have to supersede whatever the straight, shiny, silver antenna can do. So your little dark, nappy hair is much more powerful than any straight, blonde hair. Don't get it twisted. Uh, okay. I mean, yes, do get it twisted. <laughs> Exactly. Do get it twisted. I'm glad you caught that. Back to Michael Jackson. I remember he was a very, turn to the word bad. Michael Jackson has a song out called Bad. Is that accurate? Yes. And before the song Bad, Michael Jackson was a more masculine. Is that accurate? Yes. Michael did not know that by doing concerts and repeating the song Bad, at a show or on stage and repeating it over and over again, being melanated caused a spell that made Michael what he is today. When you look up the word bad and you get into the brackets, and how many of you have sons or know people that have sons that say, man, that show's a bad little boy. Do not ever call any little melanated boy bad. The word bad means effeminate and hermaphroditic. Get in the brackets. The word bad means a hermaphrodite or womanish man. Is that what you see in the dictionary? Yeah. Now, do you see how Michael has caused himself being melanated? And when you are melanated, what is it that the, the scriptures say? Ask and you shall receive. 
You speak it out and you make it reality because you spoke it into existence. And this is something that dark-skinned people have the power to do. He kept saying, I'm bad, you know it. <laughs> and today, he's bad, and you know it. Yeah, and you know it. <laughs> <laughs> right? He has become a womanish man. Yeah, he's even wearing a man right now in July. Yeah. Yes, sir. What about James Brown? Well, he's Superman. kind of womanish, too. Yeah, I mean, you know, not, as, not to the extent of Michael, but you know, it, 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 and today, see, brothers used to be some of the most powerful entities walking until back in, was it the 70s, everybody was like, yeah, I'm bad, I'm bad, I'm bad, because of, uh, of James Brown. And now, we have so many brothers that are swinging in both directions, which is fine, that's your business, everybody should do what works for them. But they're swinging in both directions, and they have these undercover closet affairs going on with other men, with the wife. If brothers knew what we were calling one another and what we're speaking out and causing to occur, we, especially as sisters and mothers, would not ever call our men this word. You understand? Because you made your sons. If you have a son that turned out to be gay, you probably called him this one too many times. Okay? Are you guys clear? I'm just trying to get you clear. Uh, Europeans knew we had that power. They knew they did not have it. That's why they didn't allow us to read until they finished reconstructing mm -hmm. all the writings, which they call the Reconstruction Era. Right. Yes. Uh, out of curiosity, that's for a womanish man. What about a uh, man like woman? I have no idea. You find that word and call me and let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I can only give no, you the little bit I know. I don't know everything. I don't know a whole lot. I only know some things. And what I know is not that much, but the little bit that I know, everybody else should know it. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Now, the brother, when I came in, a, a young brother gave me something very beautiful that was like a Blackmore thing. Um, turn to the word Blackamoor in your dictionary. B-L-A-C-K-A-M-O-O-R. Now, when you look in the brackets, it'll tell you that it is an offensive derogatory term that is unexplained. unexplained variation. It's an unexplained variation of Blackmore. You know why is now you know why it's unexplained. And it'll show little B L A C K Black with a capital M O O R more. But it should also say any dark skinned person. So any dark skinned person, and I've seen dictionaries that say any dark skinned person. Sometimes with dark, uh, thick lips and nap nappy hair. I've seen, I think Oxford said that. But the reason it's unexplained is because back in those days, they knew that black men bleached up and pale, so they couldn't understand why or how you could take the term black, which means bleached up and pale, and stick it in front of more and call it any dark skinned person. Because it don't add up. Why doesn't it add up? Because black means bleached up and pale. And more means any dark skinned person. So once you put them together, it's not that easy to explain it. Oxymoron. Oh, there you go. An oxy, more, on. Right. Left. Left. We don't want to be right. We want to be left. Got it? Left. Oh, we'll get there. OK, now, I don't want to get insulting, but before we get into the strongest exhaustive, exhaustive concordance, because now I've shown you how to use a dictionary. I hope. Yes. Now you guys know how to look up a word. Yes? Yes. yes. Okay. So now I'm going to show you how to look up words in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. But before we go there, I'm going to show you a word that is going to probably insult some people. That's why I wanted you to have your own stuff. So you could see this for yourself. Otherwise, you would get up and walk out of the room on me because I'm going to insult some people. We're going to research the word Jesus. Now, in, 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 in Latin, who knows that there really is no such thing as J except in new language? J is the newest letter under the sun. In ancient times, there could have been no one walking named Jesus because there was no such thing as J in the ancient times. So, 
We're going to try to correct that part with even that little simple piece. So if there was no one walking around called Jesus in ancient times, then who are you, you guys calling on? Yes. Who are you praying to? Zeus. Ah! Zeus. Now, there's a problem with that. In Spanish, how do you say this? Hey, hey, hey Zeus. Zeus. Look up Zeus and get into the brackets, if your dictionary has them, which is Z-E-U-S. Now, I'm getting ready to mess you guys up a little bit if you're Christian. I don't know who is one in here, and it's not my intention to insult. But just like you know that you're not black anymore, I hope you'll know you should call Jesus either in, in a minute. Who said mess them up? That's not why I'm here. I'm not here to mess you up. I'm here to, to fan away the fog so you can see. Brother, you need to be sitting by somebody with a dictionary. Are you all up in, the, in, the, in, the, in an island? Okay. Now, do you have brackets for your Jesus or not? No, they didn't give us anything. And you know why? Why? Oh, it's got the green. Because they know what it is, and they, in case you ever figured out how to use the brackets, they didn't want you to know what it was. But I'm going to show you anyway. Turn to... Oh, not for Zeus, but for Jesus. Turn to, oh, there's something in the brackets for Jesus? No, no, the one thing that has in the brackets for Jesus is this one. Middle English. It's Middle English, Old English, and Latin, Lower Latin, Lower Latin, Lower Latin, and the Greek, and that's the I, with the I. And then in the Hebrew, Yeshua. Now, Yahshua, synopticated. I'm not going to get really deep into that. I'm going to leave that as your assignment to find out the word Yahshua means I am salvation. So, when you want to be saved, you need to look towards yourself. Look inside yourself for your salvation because the spark of creator is inside you. You were born with it. You, you came directly from the creator through your mom's womb and you were unified with the creator of creation from the moment you stuck your little head out. You did not need to reach out to any blonde haired blue-eyed anybody to call for salvation because you are connected to the Savior already. But that's not where I was going. Yes. What is uh, IHS? That's the Greek. IHS? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. See, because I, I got Aramaic, Aramaic, Joshua, Joshua, Jah salvation. It says C also IHS. Well, if it says C IHS, then turn and C IHS. No, H dot Turn to it. It's probably in the dictionary just like that. If it says C-I-H-S, it's probably in there just like that. That is probably the Hebrew letters for, for it from right to left. It's probably, what does the I look like? I know I and Y are the same. Y should look like that. Uh, H should look like that. And I don't remember what S looks like. For Hebrew? And I don't remember it. Well, y'all need to talk to this sister back here. She's real clear on her Hebrew. I used to know it, but I'm, I'm fuzzy. I've been out of, out of touch. But turn to D-E-U-S. And when you get to D-E-U-S, in the brackets, it should say Zeus. I want to get you guys clear. And God, I have so much to go over. I hope we can get through it all in this little time. All I have is Zeus, 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 In your brackets, it doesn't say Zeus? Does it say it in mine? D E U S? The bracket says Latin. It's all God. G O D with G. Okay. Is there more than one Zeus? Circa Greek. Zeus. Zeus. That's Sanskrit. So it does say Zeus. It does say Zeus. Okay. But, right. But it says Zeus under Deuce, right? Zeus under Deuce. Okay. Now, look at the word just, just below it, D-E-U-C-E. -E. When you get in the brackets, it'll say D-E-U-S. But D-E-U-C-E -E means devil. Bad luck. 
But deuce and Zeus are the same word, and de deuce, D E U S and Z E U S are one and the same word. Lord, 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 Lord. get an X pronunciation on that if I But D E U S and D E U C E are also one and the same word. Yeah, but there are two different definitions of deuce. Deuce, sure this one means devil, D-E-U-S, when you read it, not the brackets, but the definition itself. There are two definitions. D-E-U-C-E means damned and confounded. So my people have been damned and confounded by the devil they call Jesus, which is Deuce, Zeus. Does anybody not see it? Because, you know, you need to see this with your eyes. I don't need to see this by myself. <laughs> <laughs> come over here and see what he's doing. He just wants some special attention. No, I just don't see it. It's not here by itself. Get up and come and look at it in this one. Since it's not in yours, come look at it in this one so you will have seen it for yourself. Oh, no. Keep the class going, but you can still get up and do that while I'm keeping the class going. Who else, who needs to see that? It's in there. Okay, so what does deuce mean, D U C? It also means damned and confused or damned and confounded. And D E U C E, if you get in the brackets, does it somewhere in there say D E U S in the brackets? Yeah. 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 And when you get into D E U S, doesn't it in the brackets somewhere say Zeus? Z E U S? Z E U S? In mine, it does. Now, look at it this way. You don't hear anything in the so-called Bible about Jesus until you get to the New Testament. Right. The New Testament is by who? Greek. The Greek. Mm -hmm. Who is the supreme God of the Greeks? Zeus. 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 And if you look in the dictionary under mm -hmm. Zeus, it will tell you the supreme God of the Greeks. Mm -hmm. So where do you find Zeus in the Greek Testament? It's written in there as what? Jesus. 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 It's really the same. <laughs> okay. Huh? No, I'm, I'm not spelling. I'm unspelling. Break the spell. Oh, <laughs> I'm unspelling. I know. Okay, now I took you there because we're going to transition from here into your Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, which is, where's mine? Oh, well, I just grabbed it. Oh, okay. You can, you can keep it. You can keep it. You can keep it. I want you to, to get out your Strong's Exhaustive Concordance for now, because again, I'm giving you clarity on how to research. That way when people say things to you, you can go find out. Because most people never taught you how to verify what you've been told, that you've been taught to just believe what you're told. We don't ask no questions when you, your mom tells you you can't go somewhere. Why? Because I said so. And the police try to stop you and it's like, well, you give me a ticket for why? What did you stop me for? Oh, you want to get out? You want to get out? You want to go to you, you, you're not allowed to ask questions in this society. So therefore, the inquisitional part or the inquisitive part of your being has been a little bit severed. So we're going to kind of tie the little knot and reconnect the ends so that now the inquisition or the, the, the inquisitor can come back out of you. So you can ask questions. You don't have to believe everything somebody tells you. Now you know how to go see. Okay. Hopefully this is a piece of helpful information. Look in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. Now I know a lot of you, who does not know how to use this thing? Come on, 
more people in here than that don't know how to use this thing. That's okay. That's better. Try to be truthful about this now, because nobody, everybody got one in their house, though. Their grandma got one, but you don't know what to do with it. It is a dictionary of the Bible, and the way it's set up is you can utilize the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance to decode the Bible. The Bible is a coded book. It is not meant to be taken literally. Too many people read this thing and believe it word for word. That's not how, that is for when you read the Bible and you take it word for word, that information is for what they call the fish. <laughs> can, I, can, can I erase this? <laughs> and we're supposed to be in the era of Pisces, which is also fish. The fish in what they call occult society circles. Yes. Thank you, sweetie. Um, or what they consider the uneducated, uninformed, lower levels of people, the low thinkers. They read the Bible and take it literally word for word the way it's said. That's what fish is about, ignorance. Those are the people that are nice. They're stupid and they do not know. So that's what you get when it says Jesus fans are fast, fast fish. <laughs> exactly. Now you're getting it. Now you're getting it. Jesus is the devil that came to deceive. Yes. Yes. Now, every creeping thing are what they consider the middle classes of people. How many of you have heard these terms in the Bible? Yeah. yeah, those, right. And the foul are considered the informed, supreme thought processors that are ruling everybody else. Okay? So, for those that want to come from the level of being a fish and start working their way up into passing the creeping thing, every creeping thing, and becoming a foul, you need to know how to use the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. The very first portion of the book has every single word in the Bible written in alphabetical order. So, let's say, for example, you want to tell somebody something like, well, you know, you guys believe in the Bible, but somewhere in the Bible it says that you're not supposed to use these Christmas trees and decorate these Christmas trees. And it does say that. Right. But if you're like, but I don't remember where it is. <laughs> then what you do is turn to, um, look up, decorate, and try to have the word decorate will have every single place in the Bible that the word decorate, or actually I think they use deck. The word deck comes up. And it will tell you under what chapter, what paragraph, and what verse in the paragraph as far as how to go and find the book, the word. And then it will tell you what number this book is in the concordance. So you can turn if you want to, like if you want to show someone in the Bible where it says, thou shalt not deck the tree like the heathen. Right, okay. Then, then you can say, okay, let me turn to Jeremiah 10.4 so I can show you in your own Bible. Then you can show it. But if you want to determine what deck means, then you say, okay, deck is word number, it'll say in the, in the little, off on the far right of the word deck, what number in the concordance it is. If the numbers are written straight up and down, then that is a word that is in the uh, Hebrew dictionary. Like so, if it's a straight up and down number one. If the number is written slanted in an italic, then that's a word you look up in the Greek portion of the dictionary. So the number one will be... Uh, like that. Okay? So, yes? The numbers that are written straight up and down in block form are words that will be defined in the Hebrew dictionary portion of the concordance. 
Words that are written in a slanted, italicized form are words that will be found in the Greek dictionary portion of the concordance. Okay? So, having said that, look in the first portion of the book and turn to the word Adam. Because a lot of men, especially brothers that are Christians <laughs> and brothers that are Islamic, you know, they get in your face, sisters, with this whole, well, you came from me anyway. I'm the man. I'm the man. God made Adam first, and you came from my rib. Boom. God, and God is a problem word, too, because the word God means Gothic, Gotham, Gothic, and it means German. So in God we trust means in Germans we trust, or in Austrians we trust. Come on, teach our sister. So you don't want to believe in God either. We can get to that probably tomorrow. Unless I need to go over it now because I brought it up. Yeah. 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 It's some huh? Some if you look up the word God in the regular dictionary, because in the in the concordance it'll tell you it means judges, amongst a bunch of other things. Mm -hmm. So when you go to court and you have a court case, the man sitting up on the bench with the black robe on is God. Right. Or a representative of God which really is Jesus, who is the head of all Christianity and the head of the Roman Catholic Church, which is the seat and foundation of all Christianity. And the dictionary will tell you that. All you got to do is look up Pope, look up Roman Catholic Church. I'm giving you words to look up that we're not going to look up today. But now that you know how to look this stuff up, you're going to look it up. That way you will know what you're saying when you talk to somebody. And when they're trying to argue and you realize they haven't done the research, you can go on about your business and just leave them in the dirt. Right. Leave the fish swimming in the water. Mm -hmm. You're trying to fly up. All you want to do is come down occasionally as a fowl and eat a fish. <laughs> <laughs> okay? But you don't want to be a fish. But you want to know when you're dealing with one. Fish and fowl don't socialize. Okay. So you're going to look up Roman Catholic Church. You're going to look up church. You're going to look up Christian and Christianity. I have a, a, a book. I was telling my sister and brother about it. No, I can't tell you guys about this book. <laughs> it's a book by, I think the guy's name is Robbins. And it's a black hardcover. And it's called, I think it's called The Encyclopedia of Witchcraft and Satanism. And they put the book out like that because they know that so-called yes. black people will not even touch a book right. that says anything like that on the cover and will look at you sideways if they see you holding it reading. Man, what you read? <laughs> right. <laughs> what you into? <laughs> right. <laughs> but this particular book, when you open the book up and you get into it, it's only a history book with this cover on it. Yes, right. And the book tells you every pope that, you know, uh, 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 what do they call it when they do a papal degree that bulled something and ordered something? And, you know, how it tells you who invented witchcraft, who, the book, it just drops it. It's just a history book. Give us the title again, please. It's called The Encyclopedia of Witchcraft and Satanism. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give Gwen and Carl the exact title okay. and the exact author in case I'm calling it wrong, but I think that's what it's called. Yeah, you can find this book on the internet because everybody that I know that found it found it on the internet. Which author? I think it's Robbins or Bobbins. Okay? And it's a terrific book. But one of the things in there is that all of this stuff that we're dealing with that you guys are trying to get free of right now only applies to Christians anyway. That if you're not a Christian, it don't even apply to you. That's right. In order for this stuff to apply to you, you have to be a Christian now or at some point in your life have been one or profess to be one. These rules and all this madness out here do not apply to people that are not Christians. Yes? They have a term called Morisco, which means a Moorish Christian, more who has converted over to Christianity. Yeah, but most Moriscos were, became Moriscos by force, and most of the Moriscos today don't know their history, so when you try to co correct them about this Jesus Christ Christianity stuff, they're ready to argue with you about, oh, you need to go to church and get saved yourself, 
because they don't understand what you're trying to tell them about how their ancestors were forced into Christianity. Well, at the, at the expense of a lot of bloodshed, a lot of our ancestors were massacred and murdered and tormented and tortured in order to shove this Christianity down our throats. And now that we have the opportunity to wake up and move away from it, a lot of our people that are so stuck in a belief system that have verified nothing, validated nothing, confirmed nothing, researched nothing, don't know how to look nothing up, will curse you out and be ready to take you to church and get you baptized if you try to tell them they need to get away from Jesus and Christianity. But in this dictionary uh, encyclopedia that I'm talking about, it says in there in no uncertain terms that Christianity is the church of Rome. That is an exact quote. Christianity is the church of Rome. Not the religion of Rome, the church of Rome. And the church, when you look it up in the dictionary, will tell you it is the whole body of Christian believers. So anybody that believes in Jesus or anybody that is a Christian is a part of the church, which means they are the property or subject of Rome. And the Vatican is in Rome, which is in the heart of Germany. Because there are three brothers that when their father died, they split Germany up into these little separate aspects. So that one had this part, and one had this part, and one had this part. But all of it, Italy, Rome, Germany, all of it was one thing. It was all Germany, Austria. It was all the same stuff. And George Bush and them are a part of this family. The Jews that run Hollywood are also a part of this family. The people that are in the Windsor Castle, the Queen and them, are a part of this family. All of these people are one and the same, and a lot of our people don't understand it. And I just tell them, well, if you don't think they're one and the same, then ask yourself why it is that the dictionary, at least I have one that says that Christianity is the antithesis of Judaism. But back in the day, they used to call it Judeo-Christian. Yes. So how is it the opposite? Hmm. And if it's the opposite, why does the Pope wear a yarmouk like other Jews? So don't think for a second that you are being treated differently by different people. You're being treated the same by all these Europeans. They're all the same little family that's dying off. And they're not going to continue to live unless we keep letting them continue to live. And they will continue to live as long as we keep calling on them to save us. Because we keep calling on Jesus, Zeus, the Pope. Okay, now where was I going with this point? Somebody asked me to go click. Adam. 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 Is anybody there? Yes. yes. What number is the word Adam? Adam. It's on the far right. That's exactly right. Turn to the turn through the pages until you get to the Hebrew dictionary of the concordance. Not the regular Bible. The Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. And you'll know because you'll get past, you'll be past this list of words in alphabetical order. And then you'll get to all the words that are in numeric order under Hebrew, and you'll know they're Hebrew because the numbers will not be italicized. Once you get to the numbered words that are not italicized, turn to word 120. Because these brothers that tell my sisters that you're the man, I'm the man, you're a woman, you came from my rib, I'm Adam, Adam came first, you came from me. First of all, I don't know any man on earth that spit any woman from his rib, unless they're talking about the one in the crotch area. And Adam, by definition, did not come first. Eve came first. Who found word 120? Read to me what word 120 says, sister in the back with the glasses, and try to say it loud so it can be on the, on the tape. Okay, Adam, from 119, Rudy, a human being. Ruddy. 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 A human being. A human being. Okay. An individual or the species mankind. Stop. Adam is ruddy. He is a human being from the species mankind. We are not ruddy. We're not human beings. And we're not mankind. That's why when 
Neil Armstrong is supposed to have stepped foot on the moon and said, this is a small step for man and a giant leap for mankind. He's talking about two totally different species. You're a man. They're a kind of man. They're mankind. You're not mankind. You're not of mankind. You're not from mankind. Don't let anybody twist you up with that. And I'm going to show you how. Keep going, sis. Uh, uh, Etc. And then it says there's a, uh, a semicolon, and it says times another plus hypocrite. Adam is a hypocrite. Plus common sort. Adam is a common sort. And then there's an ex low, low man. He's a low man. And then in parenthesis it has mean. He's a mean person. Of low degree. Of low degree. Ooh. That's Adam. Mm -hmm. It comes from word number 119. Look up 119 and this time I want a brother to read that to me. I'll read it. Come on brother, speak it up. Show blood in face. Shows blood in the face. Flush. Oh, he gets flush. Say that again. Or turn rosy. Uh, flush or turn rosy. He turns rosy. Be dyed or made red. He right. gets dyed and made red. Who the hell is that? <laughs> that is that, that is that is the original black man. Right, please. So, <laughs> this is the cracking up. Adam is a low man, a mean person, a hypocrite, common sort of low degree that turns red, gets flushed, turns rosy, and shows blood in the face. So, who in here is Adam? Yes, brother. <laughs> they do speak of the pre Adamites before Adam. That's man. And Adam is a human being of the species mankind. So when they're on television now talking about human beings and mankind, you know they're not talking about you. Because you're man. That's why Darwin comes in the picture. Now, turn and look up the word. Now, I'm going to write this down. I, I, no, I don't want to take you guys back to the regular dictionary. But I'm going to tell you this so you can look it up later. Okay, can I erase this? Yes. Yes. All right. So, how many sisters have had some brother tell you something about you came from him and his rib? Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, the next time they tell, tell you that, you say, you know what? You must be nice. <laughs> got to be a fool. Got to be a fool. So nice. Okay. And you back. <laughs> if you think that you spit me out, you are bad. <laughs> you must think you a woman, because you can't spit out nothing. See? I last because I was nice, right? A nice guy. One thing about the European, they do not lie. They trick. Right. But the truth, okay. like they said in the X-Files, the truth is it's out there. Yeah. It's up to you to find it. Yes. It's your fault if you don't look it up. That's you right. cannot fault the European for the jacked up condition you're in because you, as a melanated superconductor, created this condition. Mm -hmm. And you can uncreate it. But you have to first know that that's what's going on. That's why you're here today, so you can get clear. That's right. So that's all I can do is help get you clear. All right. Yes, man. The word man, M-A-N, and the word M-A-N-N-A, and the word M-A-N-A are one and the same. That's why they said them wandering Jews-ish people, the European, that was cast out, wandered around, and they were fed man, or mana. They were fed mana. They were fed mana. They ate one Huh? They ate one No, they were eating us, and they're still eating us. <coughs> You're man. When you get a chance, look up 
when you get in the brackets, you'll see that anytime you look in the brackets, for example, you'll get in the brackets of the word mana. Because when you look up man, it should tell you man. It also is this word, M-A-U-N. I mean, if you have time, you're welcome to flip there, you know. But I'm just saying, we don't have time to go back to the regular dictionary. But you can go back if you know you're a quick reader. Because certain things you need to see for yourself. And while we're talking about it, it's probably the best time to see it for yourself. Because later you may forget. So, when you look in the brackets of the word mana, it'll tell you that the, two, the N and A can be removed. These words are the same. It'll also show you that you can remove, um, I think, one of the ends. But anyway, M-A-N-A -A means supernatural force and power. That's what you are. That's what man is. Man is a supernatural force and power. Man is a superconductor, a melanated superconductor. And it is your melanin that makes you a superconductor. Stop looking for brighter, whiter wives and husbands. Find the darkest thing you can find if you want to get any level of your power back. And who say that again and say it out loud. There you go. There you go. The blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice. So y'all got the so you let the European run this color game on you and you started kicking out all the power in the community. Jeez. Don't bring that black boy home. Cause see, brothers like him, that's all I was trying to talk to when I was coming up. And my grandmother used to be like, where you keep finding all these black niggas? I'd be like, hey, you know, this is what I like. What can I say? But she wanted them lighter and brighter, and I didn't care. So, unfortunately, most of our people have heard that kind of stuff coming up, and a lot of us bought into it. Why? For one thing, they are our elders. Two, I'll disown you. What is it they say? You bring a white boy home, you're not my son, my daughter anymore. You bring a white girl home, you're not my son anymore. You bring something too black, ah, uh, you ain't my relative no more. Either way, my people have got to figure out where the power is. You are the power. They have this most supreme entity on earth, thinking that they are the most inferior yes. entity on earth. That's right. And the most inferior entity on earth knows that you're the most supreme entity. Yeah. They know they're inferior, they know they're dying, and they know that you don't know. Mm -hmm. And right. as long as you don't know, they, don't they can know. keep programming your brain through their medium of images and sounds and frequencies to keep putting out enough power to transmute and transmogrify your energy and create their reality instead of your own. All day. You understand? Okay. Now, how many people in here are Adamites? From Adam. Okay. Now, turn to the word. I'm going to speed this up. Turn to word 3050, which is Jehovah. I think it's 3050. In the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. I'm sorry. Remember, we were, see, that's what happens when you start switching books. So that's why I didn't want to go back, because it creates confusion. How you doing over there, young brother? You learning anything? Yeah. That's y'all. He probably still thinking, man, why my mom bring me here? <laughs> that's OK. Even though he's not listening, it's going in his ear anyway. And he's the proper age to learn this stuff. Because actually, people our age, I don't even usually mess with y'all. I'm, I'm after brothers like that one right there. Teach. Truth matter is him and that little fella there, that's my audience. Yes. How did we get in this message? With an with slaves. It's the glamour of grammar. For one thing, we were not allowed to speak. What was that? If we, we know Roots was not a true story, but one of the things they did to Kunta Kente was stopping from me. In Roots and also in uh, Rabbit Proof Fences, all these movies, the first thing they want you to do is stop speaking your language. This is how we speak here. They get you out of your frequency and vibration, which removes you and separates you from your power. 
And they do that first by separating you from your mother. And if you're a man, from your woman. <laughs> they say uh, English is the language of liars anyway. Well, yeah, I mean, the pilgrims that came over here were the rapists, the robbers, the thugs, the thieves, the criminals of Europe. They didn't want them. They kicked them out, cast them out. Here were the penal colonies. Yes. The word colony is the old word for the new word state. And we'll get into some of that when we get into the Black's Law Dictionary. Okay, who's at Jehovah? Did anybody find the word? What is the word 30 or what, Jehovah's? Which one? It's 3068 for Jehovah. Thank you. My bad. 3068. Did you say my dog? Hey, but I am a feminine. And I, I, I am a womanish man. I'm, no, man means supernatural force and power. Uh, bad means womanish man. Okay. Okay. I am that. <laughs> you understand? You shouldn't say it, my bad, brother. You should say it. Who's now? What brother just said that? <laughs> okay. Now the word Jehovah is a two-part word. The first part of the word is Yah, and it says it in the book. It says, see, the uh, first part, 3050, which is Yah. Right. Mm -hmm. And the second part is what number? Uh, 3068. There's more numbers. Give me some more numbers. I think it starts with a one. Turn to that, 1961. That's the second part of the word Jehovah. Hey, you. So is it going to make a difference whether this spelling is with a J or a Y? Remember, there is no J in ancient language. Well, Why? The dictionary is not. When you look in a regular dictionary, if you look up J, if your old dictionary has, like in mine, let me just show you this real quick, because that's a valid question, brother. Okay, like here, my dictionary has the very forms of the letter, the original written forms of the letter, on the very first page for every letter. It'll tell you it's from Semitic or Phoenician or what, and then it came up to the Greek and the Roman or whatever. And then it'll have a little blip down here about the, the letter. And it'll tell you that Y and I and J are one and the same letter. Okay, so for those of you that are going, okay, well, what's this Yahovah? Where's the J? Okay, that's what I was telling you. There is no Jesus. There was Yahshua. All right, can I erase this? Yes. Am I boring you guys yet? Oh, no. Yes. I hope not. <laughs> okay. J E H. O V A H is really Y A H H O V A H. But I'm going to show you. Word 1961. Look down at word number 1962. I mean, I'm just going to make this quick for you. Whenever I look up words, I look at the words above and below the words because sometimes they hide the stuff above or below. So it is above. <laughs> now, what does it say in word number 1962? It'll tell you, go look somewhere else and see Hova. Word 1943. Somebody read that. Uh, another form. 349. How and how? It says mischief, but it gives you another number. Hova, that's okay. Hova means mischief. Ruin and calamity, rushing and falling, iniquity, which is unequalness and unfairness. Um, and it says, see word number what? 1942? What does 1942 say? From 1933. 1943. 
Right. Eagerly coveting and rushing upon. Rushing upon or rushing and falling. It means it means ruinous calamity. Mischief is a perverted, nawasome thing. Naughty, naughtiness, wickedness. Now, if you look up Jehovah, which was three zero something, three zero six eight, it says in there that this is the the God of the Jewish nation or something. Yep, that's what it says. The Jewish God. The national God. The, the national say it again out loud. The Jewish national God is Jehovah. Right. But we, you know, I, we, I didn't, we didn't stop it. Yeah, you can go back and stop it if you wanted to. But you had to see Jehovah. Now, we have a lot of people that are calling on this individual, which is another form of dem demonism, lower level things. People wanting to be Adam, a lower level thing. People calling on Zeus, Deus, damn confounded devil. And the most melanated people are the ones that are calling on this stuff and what's wrong with the world. It's exactly all of that. It's ruined, it's mischievous, it's calamity, it's perverted, the awesome thing. All the boys are becoming bad. Everybody's nice. Calling on Jesus, thinking they're Adam, calling on Jehovah, and the world's screwed up. Yes. So, is, is this why one of the reasons why they're promoting Kabbalahism so toughly? No, the Kabbalah stuff is your stuff. See, the Kabbalah stuff is your stuff. That starts getting into the more of the magic, the witchcraft, the sorcery, the sciences that they don't want you to use because they need you to keep creating this reality. That's how they stay in control. Because if you get into your power and start creating your reality, it's like this. The Europeans are in power and they stand in power because they're standing on my backs. But when I stand up, they fall off. So whenever my people stop calling Jesus, stop calling Jehovah, stop thinking they're Adam, they can start standing up. When they stop being Christians, they're subjects of Rome and Europeans that are in the Windsor Castle, that are in the White House, that are in Hollywood or wherever they are, claiming they're whoever they are and they're really all the same people, then we can start standing in our own power, standing in your own space, on your own so-called square. Personally, I like standing on circles, but, you know. Uh, does anybody have a the square, question? The square fits in the circle, right? Well, they all add up to the 360 degrees. Right. You know. Show them that, because they're not going to believe. Believe what? Put a square up and then put the 90 degrees in and you show it. I think that, back. who doesn't know that? Well, that a square is 360 degrees. It kind of is another class. I mean, each corner, each right angle is 90 degrees. There's 90 in this corner. This is getting into geometry for you guys, some of you. Now, my square may not be quite square. This one is 90 degrees. This one is 90 degrees. This one is 90 degrees. One, two, three, four times nine is 360. Or 4 times 9 is 36, stick the O back there. It's 360 degrees in a square and 360 degrees in a circle. But melanated people are circular and spirally, like your nappy hair and your nappy melanocytes, yes. which are spiraling vortexes. Your hair is a spiraling vortex. You know, oceans have all these spiraling vortexes. Europeans are square. Oh. They do things linear. When we were building buildings, all of our buildings had circular, rounded uh, apexes at the top. The domes, what they call the um, Moorish architecture or Islamic architecture, everything was rounded like, a, like the womb inside the mother. Everything was rounded like the planet we're standing on. Yes. Things were rounded and spirally. But Europeans, they have all these buildings that are squares. 
squares. <laughs> they, 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 they're in the box, and now they have you in the box. So you got to get out of the box so you can get off the hook and get off the chain. Got it? Play on words. Stop being a fish. <laughs> get out of Pisces, which is the, the era of ignorance and delusion and confusion. Because anything that's Greek is hell. And, no, we're not going to go there. When you guys get a chance, I want you to look in your regular dictionaries, write this down as homework. Look up the word hell, H-E-L-L. -L. Up, look up the word Helen, H-E-L-L-E-N, Helene, H-E-L-E-N-E. -E. Like Helene Curtis. And the word Hellenistic, H-E-L-L-I-N-S-T-I-C. Somewhere in there, because most of the dictionary definitions don't tell you right where you need to find it, like in hell. But when you look all of that up, they're all the same word. The word hell means Greek, or anything Greek, like Zeus, Jesus, Jesus. And the word hell means... Uh, um, or Hellenistic, or Helen, or Helene, or anything that's of hell, is coded to confound and confuse and to mystify. That's what the word hell means. That you're confused, you're confounded, and you've been mystified. Because you're in the glamour of grammar, because you're speaking language, I'm going to erase this, language, which is linga, age, which is the penis era. That's what's wrong with everybody. We've been, I got young minds in here, so I can't say. <laughs> We've been clicked. Yes. Took a D there instead. Okay, language. When it comes to words, words, when you're dealing with vowels, vowels are removable and interchangeable. Language is the same as language. And ling is short for linga, which is another word for phallus. Linga, and if you, you know, take the U out, age. We've gone from an era of the world being ruled by womb entities, known as so-called women, woo man, to an era where we're, we're ruled by <coughs> phalluses. We're being dicked. Excuse me, youngsters. <laughs> Yeah. Dictatorship. We've gone from matriarchy into patriarchy. Most societies that were melanated, actually all societies, when melanated people were ruling the world, all societies were matriarchal in nature. Now, men don't want to hear nothing their mother has to say or anything their wife has to say. I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man. You can't tell me. And that's what has our people screwed. The relationship between our men and our women must be repaired. And I do have a CD back there. Um, actually, it's a DVD. It's less than an hour long. I only have a handful of them. They're only 10 bucks. And it's called Moving Energy to Empower Men. It was written, it was, I did it especially to, to empower my brothers. However, when I did that lecture, I was extremely angry <laughs> with Sultan Khan Bey's people. <laughs> and it shows for the people that know me. They're like, man, sis, what was wrong? I'm like, people that don't know can't tell. People that know me were like, ooh, girl, what was the matter with you? Yes. Energy the old. But anyway, um, it's very short. I highly recommend it for brothers and sisters because a lot of sisters do not know how to even deal with my brothers. We don't know how to talk to them. We don't know how to interact with them. And when we're raising our sons, we repeatedly fail in droves on how we do not teach our sons how to do level, fair combat with women. We make sure you know how to fight with men, but we never taught our men how to fight with women. And they don't know, and it's our fault. Okay? So, back to where we are. Now, I said that we're not from Adam. We are from Eve. Somebody look up Eve in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. What number is that word?
we're doing pretty good on time. This is good. I got to get through all these things. What number is Eve? What number is Eve? I don't have my, somebody has my book out there, so I can't I put it off the top of my head. Eve, Eve, Eve. Let me find it. Eve is word 2332. I think it's Chaya, Kaya, C H A Y A A or B A A, something like this. Chava. You guys find that word in your Strong's Exhaustive Concordances. And who has mine again? Oh, okay. No problem. You okay? You're all right. Well, I'm all left, but I know what you mean. That which is right is male and positive. The word positive is also, and what I do with the pen, while you guys are looking it up, since he said I'm all right, comes up, so I'm going to cover it, and then I'm going to get back to where we're going. See, this is the problem. What is it people keep saying to people? Oh, man, you're too negative. You're too negative. You need to be more positive. That's what's wrong with the world. We have too much positivity going on. That which is positive is the same as P-O-S-E. Positive. Positive. If somebody wants you to pose, what do you need to do? Stop. 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 And stand still. Positive is not moving. Melanin is the simpler conductor. Moving, moving, must move. Like water. Oceans, rivers, move. Got to move. Got to move. If you keep being positive, then you're posing too much. You're standing too still. Exactly. Stagnating. And you're water, right? Because what is the human body? Over 70% water. And the earth is over 70% water. And the cosmos is over 70% water. And the air you breathe is over 70% water. And you're in all this motion, and you want to pose and stand still and be positive. What you need to be is a little bit more negative because the word any means no. And if you look in your regular dictionary when you get a chance, any means no. No gated. Gates do what? They lock you in. They close you in. They're enclosures. They bar you in. You want to be a little more negative. No gated. So if there are no gates, then you can keep going. You don't want to be barred and gated in and closed up. So you need to be a little more negative or negative or no gated. No gates, no bars, no barriers will help you to move and flow and stop posing. That's why they got to put all us men in jail. That's what they're doing, right? Yeah. They're doing that because of some things they're getting ready to try to do, and they need to make sure the warriors are locked up. Most of the brothers that they leave out and let keep walking are brothers that they do not perceive as a threat. Over 40. The brothers that are a threat, Over the ones that are off the hook, got weapons, don't mind using them, they want them out of the way. Right. They want them contained and detained. Right. You brothers that have kind of laid back and just, 50. whatever. You know, yeah, yeah, you know, you must have did something wrong. If you're in jail, you must have broke, <laughs> broke the law. You brothers are now a threat. You're okay. They can leave you all out all day because... They can come jump on you, jump on your wife, jump on your children, and you'll just stand there and do nothing. Not saying that any individual specifically, but for the most part, that is their perception. If you're still walking, when this jump jumps off, that's because they don't think you matter. Yes. Come on. Oh, I was just going to say, I might give that, I might give that impression. I got a whole other side to me. And that's good. We'll need brothers like that, too. Yeah. All right. So, has anybody found Eve? <laughs> Read to me what it says about Eve. Now remember, Adam is a nation of people that look like what? Bloody. Bloody. They're black people. They get red in the face, turn rosy, get flush in the face. Eve, what does it say? That's another nation of people. Say that louder. Eve is the life giver. That's all of you. Eve is who else? The first, one. the first woman. Now remember, melanin is a part of the feminine principle. So don't think that brothers, when they say you're the first woman, they're saying you are feminine. But you are a part of what is called the feminine principle. 
which is to the left. Because that which is right is positive, male, masculine, and stagnant. That which is to the left is female, flowing, fluid of water. So is that what they yes. mean by uh, a son of a will? Well, yeah, you couldn't have got here without. That's yes. why on the Egyptian poles you see the female standing with the hand and his two left hands for the negatives. There you go. Okay, well, see, I see, now you're clear. See, all I can do is get you clear. Now you can see some of the whys the things are what they are. Anybody in here not getting clear? <laughs> Who in here is getting clear? Sister, you make it very clear. Okay, this works for me. What did he just say about the, uh, you see the Egyptian woman holding up the baby? She, she said she's got two hands on us to the left. Bring it down to the left, yes. Yeah, so is, is, is that also a reason why they have you to uh, swear with your right hand because your right hand is backwards and, and your left hand is correct, but they they are backwards, so they must prefer you to go the way that they go, which is right. All right, and I forgot to ask y'all the whole questions to the end, so at this point I ain't was right. <laughs> and my baby told me, he said, baby, make sure you ask them the whole questions to the end. Right. And the sister asked me to do it too, and I forgot. Yes. Correct. The word rect means right. There's a problem with that. The word rect also means rex, which means right, which means king. But R and L are the same letter, so that also means lex, which is another word for law, still all to the right, all positive. It's better to be, it's better to be more left or level which is the same because left, lev, L-E-V, means left, means gauche, like Reeve gauche, and that's the left L. Left brain. Left L, um, which if you take the word level, L-E-V-L, um, E-L, you have Eve sitting smack dab in the middle. So you don't necessarily want to be all right, and you don't want to be all left. You want to be level. Eve. Got uh, balance. You don't want to lance your bar. <laughs> you want to be level. You know what I'm saying? So, in order to be level, you're gonna to have to start be doing more, putting more weight. I'm, I'm a Libra. The scales are out of balance. So, in order to balance the scales, you need to start putting more weight on the left. Come on now. So you start standing up straight. Come on. When you stand up straight, then people will fall off your back. That's right. Okay. Now back to Eve. Somebody finish telling me about Eve. And somebody louder, because he's not loud enough. Who's got Eve on the page? Eve. Uh, I have... Shava. Shava. Louder, Omari. Huh? Louder. Shava. Ka, Ba. What is this? Causat. Causative. From first woman. I'm sorry, I missed part. Life giver. Thank you. Chava or Eve, the first woman. You want me to go to uh, Keep two, going. three? Keep going. Yep, go to the, where we were first. Chava. Again, Ka, Va, Pro, the same as 232, two, life giving, i.e., living place, an encampment or village, small town. Keep going. Again. Go to the 233. Three. Or whatever it is, ain't refer to. Okay, well, two, three, two. Go to the one they referred you to. Oh, unless I, I, I can do this faster, but I want y'all to see it. We did that. We read three, one. Okay, well, what? Say, what I'm not hearing you guys read to me is what it really says about Eve. Eve is the life giver, and it says that Eve is the one that's the solution to the problem. Eve is the repairer that's going to make everything correct, uh, level. Give me my book. Who's got my book? Because <laughs> y'all ain't, not, not that one, baby. Y'all ain't found it yet. I'll bring it right back. The seer down to 235. I have it all highlighted in here. Prime root. Primitive root. Primitive root, okay. 233 what? 2332. Put these on so I can see here. So life giver. All right. Okay, here we go. Eve was from what? Was it 2331? 
or two three three two? We started two three three two. Two three three two. We started two three three two. I think it goes all the way back to. Okay, which means two three three one, the life giver. Two three three one means to live, to declare or show. Okay, and then it says compare it to two three two four and two four two one. Two, three, two, four is down on the same page. It means to show. And the other word, two, four, two, one, two, four, two, one means to live, whether literally or figur figuratively, to revive, to keep alive, to make alive, to give promise, to give life, to let suffer to live. To recover, to repair, to nourish up, to preserve, to quicken, to restore, to save alive, to be whole, to make whole. That's Eve. That's you. But it also says God. You take what you want to take from that. You can leave it all if you don't want to use any of it. I'm saying that to say, they always said Eve was the problem. No, she didn't. According to their own decoding dictionary, which you need to understand their Bible, Eve is the solution to the problem. Adam is the problem. Adam is what? The man, the species, the ruddy, shows blood in the face, gets red in the face, gets flesh, tur gets flushed, turns rosy, human being of the species mankind. He's low, he's a mean person of low degree, he's a low, mean man. That's Adam. Eve is here to revive, to restore, to recover, to make whole, to save lives. That's you. Yes. Out of curiosity, just to make a point out of it, George Bush and Kyleesa Rice, is that a uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. I, I don't know what to make of that, sister. Did I get the brother back the book? Okay. Yeah. I was All just right. looking at the, it's just the comparison some kind of way. In that. Right, see. right. Okay, now that's what I wanted to show you about the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. Now you know how to use it. Right? All right. Now let's go to the Black's Law Dictionary. Do you guys need a 10, 15 at this point? No. You, know, you need a 10 minute potty break? Let's, well, in all fairness, because your minds are a little on at this point, take a, let's come back at 5.35. Right now it's 5.25. Let's take a 10 minute break. Is that long enough? Yes. Yeah. All right. How many people are beginning to get a headache? <laughs> your heads are not getting tight? No, no, no. I just want somebody to help me carry this stuff back. Okay. For some of you, it's, it's, it should be a mind blast. This is three of the heaviest books I got at home. You're taking away the confusion. You are putting tools in my hand. Right. See, all I'm doing is trying to show you how to use the tools. I'm not here to create any followers. I don't know where I'm going, so you don't want to follow me. But I can show you how to find your own thread to get out of the labyrinth. You know what I mean? All right. Well, now, how many people here got the Black's Law 7th or 8th? Because those won't work today. What is the difference in those? I don't know. A lot of things are not there. A lot of things that are no longer in them. They removed a lot of stuff from the 7th and 8th. They add things in, but... Like one of my sisters, Lady Ma'at, would say, if it's new, it's not true. And if it's true, it's not new. So 7th and 8th, they're a little too new. So they can't be all true. These other ones are a little new too, but you know. Okay, so what is it new? Huh? You know, I'm, I'm talking about as far as, you know, people who aspire to. What is it all. new? You're not new. No, I'm talking about as far as the blacks, you know, which edition would you want to go and. Well, they're all a mess, in my estimation, but four, five, and six, preferably four and six. Okay. Four and six are the ones you would want to try to get. 
Okay? But if you can only find a five, get the five in hardback, not paperback. Third is cool too, but a lot of things that are going to be covered are not in there. Why are they just now trying to cover it up and not back there when they did two, three, and four? Back in those days, our people weren't that good in the English. Remember, back in the day, we weren't allowed to read. Right. That's right. It wasn't that far back. Look in the book, in the, in the copyright, in the book. Look in the copyright of the book. We weren't smart back there. It's not so much that we weren't smart. Our people are, are fish. Our people were very Christianized. We weren't, we, and originally when, when the Europeans came here and they found our people because uh, they did find our, our Ankh Esters, I like Ankh Esters instead of Ancestors. You know, A and C, A and K, same difference. To me, that may as well, can I erase this? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> See, somebody's going to always get you off on a tangent. It's not too relevant to where you're going. But. <laughs> to me, that's what that word is. As is the root of the word essence. Uh, uh, that's us, the Ancestors. Our, our ancient Ancestors were here. The Europeans came here and found our Ancestors here. And yes, we could write, and yes, we could read. But we did not write nor read in the language they wrote and read in. They were so impressed with the way we lived and ran our governments and the situations, the way we did things, that they modeled and emulated everything after us. Right. Some of our people tried to help them and work with them. And everything that we did, all they did is turned on us and used it against us. Mm -hmm. And they have us, the progeny of our ancestors, in this trick bag and bind today. Mm -hmm. When um, I have a, a, a page out of an eight, I think it's an 1849 Webster's Dictionary. And the definition of American, who has a penny in here? Everybody pull out a penny. No, don't give it to me. Just pull it out. Put it on the brown hand side of you. Pull the penny out, stick your hand out, and lay the penny on the back of your hand like this. Y'all need to move a little faster. It shouldn't take that long to get a penny on the back of your hand. All right, the definition in this 1849 dictionary of American was the, the, the copper colored races of people that the pilgrims found on these shores when they arrived here. Today, however, the term is applied to the descendants of the pilgrims that arrived here and found the true Americans. So when you look at the penny on the back of your hand, is the definition of American more you or them? You. The copper colored races of, I think they said Aboriginal indigenous people that the European, well they said pilgrims, that the pilgrims found on the Americas when they arrived. And you said that was, the year was 18. That's an 1849 Webster's Dictionary. And I don't like Webster, but I'm saying all that to say they had something that was going on uh, when George Washington and these guys were running around. The Europeans that were brought here, because remember this was a penal colony, a lot of these people were prisoners of Europe, and they were displaced here to work and do trade or to do the labor for trade. But some of them liked the way that we did things so well that a lot of them ran off the colonies and ran over to live with us. That's why the people that are on the reservations today look more like them than the true copper-colored races of people they found here. But when they came, 
and they started running off with us, they had what they they had to pass laws to stop that. And one of the laws they called a law against Indianization, mm. which was a European loving the way that the autochtons lived so well that they ran off to be with them and ran off from the colony. I just gave you another word that you should look up. The word is autochtons, A-U-T-O-C-H-T-H-O-N-S. That's you. The pilgrims are heterotochtons, people that come from somewhere else to a different land. Autochtons are people that are attached to the land. See, the autochtons here were lied to during the uh, Reconstruction era. It's not that they were, what is it you said, uh, not smart, but they were not allowed to read the language of the European. Because a lot of our people started teaching themselves this freaking language. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what they did is, you know, they could, you, you could be killed, you could be disfigured, dismembered, tormented, tortured, or they, you could, you'd have to watch them torment or torture one of your relatives that you cared a lot about. The same way they convinced you to become Christian is the way they kept you from speaking their language. When they finally finished rewriting all the text and reconstructing all the manuscripts, then they started allowing our people to read. But you have to deal with a, 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 something that's genetically inbred with this whole... I could be beat or killed or tortured for reading, so that's still something with my people, the reluctance to read, because reading was almost beaten out of you. So when you were finally allowed to read, nobody was beating down the doors or breaking their necks to hurry up and read, because they still had to get over the fear that was attached with the forceful not reading, if that makes any sense.